morning, church. What a joy, what an honor to be in the house of the Lord. I know you are in your homes or wherever you are logged in from, but our God is such an awesome God. He's a great God. He never fails. He never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you have seen the testimony you've heard of these men and women that how the Lord has healed them and uh, how the Lord is still has a heart to heal humanity. And we are so grateful to the Lord for that. And we know that we come from broken backgrounds, broken homes, broken lives, uh, broken lifestyles. But the Lord had been highly gracious and merciful unto us in saving our soul and delivering us from the snares of death and has placed us on the land of the living that we will glorify the name of Jesus. This morning, I greet you all in the mighty name of the Lord. Uh, we welcome you to the amazing Grace Church and Ministries Global Worldwide Service, and may the Lord honor you, bless you, wherever you are logged in from. I bless you in the name of the Lord. If you are watching us live on Facebook, you will be blessed and healed even right now in the name of Jesus as the voice of God goes through and uh, you hear the word of God, you will be healed and you will be blessed and you will see the glory of the living God. Well, um, in this church, uh, the pastors and the leaders and the congregation, we love you with the love of Christ. And we are determined in our hearts to please God more than man. And uh, more than that, with the love of God, we can love men and point them towards Christ where they can honor God and they can live their lives honorably on this earth. There's one thing that has now been missing in this, uh, uh, par, uh, in this era. Um, unlikely how we grew up with great honor and respect. We find that honor and respect is lacking a lot in, in humanity today. And uh, people are getting desperate because they have lost hope in governments, they have lost hope in the world system, they have lost hope in humanity, and therefore you find there are killings and there are murders and there are rapes and there, are, uh, there is anarchy and there are uprising and there is all sort of things that is happening in the world that distresses the soul of human beings. And out of that distress, we can go into great times of despair and discouragement and depression and not know how to uh, wave our way through and meander through this quagmire of life and we may not know how to establish our destiny with the Lord God Almighty. But let me just encourage you today this morning that in Jesus you and I have hope. In Jesus you know you and I have healing. In Jesus you and I have life eternal. In Jesus you and I will Will live eternally with God the Father in heaven. And that's the great comfort we get and derive when we understand the power of the Word of God. I want to quickly take you to the second part of the blessings of Passover. Last to last week, I had uh, shared on the blessings of Passover, and this was the part two. And I talked to you about how when God brought Israel out of the, the land of Pharaoh, out of the land of Egypt, he did not bring them in their slavery, neither did he bring them in their poverty, nor, neither did he bring them in their sicknesses and the diseases, or neither did he bring them in any way of curse of the land that they were living in. But when the Lord brought them out from Egypt unto himself, that's what he did. God brought them out from Egypt unto himself for a purpose. What was the purpose when God calls you out from the world unto himself? He's got a purpose to make you holy. He's got a purpose to heal you. He's got a purpose to flourish you. He's got a purpose to prosper you. He's got a purpose that he will grant you eternal life. And that's the great joy and hope and faith that we have in our spirit when we come out from the world system and we come to the Lord God Almighty, to the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, all those heavy laden people and weary people, they can come to the Lord and they will surely find rest. And that's what excites my spirit, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, I was um, 18 years of age and I was very, very sick. And at that point of time, I had traveled down from my hometown to, uh, in India to, to New Delhi. 
and uh, some people befriended me in the train and they gave me a uh, juice apple juice laced with drugs and they you know they they i took that juice and uh, in confidence that you know they are my friends and they were pally and i was pally so you know i just took that what they gave me and i lost my consciousness and when i lost my consciousness later on these people i was taken away from my friends and then later on this this gang that was operational in new delhi you know they they robbed me of my jacket in the month of december it was very freezing cold in the northern parts of india during december it's winter and uh, apparently they robbed me of all my belongings took my uh, took my watch out took out, took out all my jacket and i was a student at the time and so they left me took my money whatever the little that i had at the time and uh, they left me with my identity card in my wallet in my in my uh, pocket and they took everything else so they knew if i would die then the cops will take my body and return it back to my parents that was the condition and i was beaten up and i was left to die in one of the parks in new delhi and i was there for 24 hours in a state of unconsciousness and when i came to consciousness i came to the new delhi railway station because my dad served the railways and so um, so I, I gave my reference of my dad to the guard of the train and I told him, please take me back to my hometown. And so by with grace and mercy, he took me in in his uh, cabin and a guard's cabin. And, you know, I came home and when I came home, you know, I lost consciousness completely and I was uh, talking gibberish. And I had lost my memory. I could not recognize my mother, could not recognize my sister, my father, and my family, all my friends. And my condition had uh, deteriorated to such an extent. They took me to the medical college and they took me to the doctors. And they, the doctors told, uh, in, in short, the doctors told my parents, it would have been better for your son to die rather for the, him to live because if he's going to live, he's going to live in a vegetative state. His memory is totally destroyed. His brain cells are dead and there is too much of drugs in his body. And the drug that they injected in my body later on after lacing my juice with drug was an L. LSD and uh, the people who are in the medical profession will tell you that in a higher dosage of LSD can kill you or can uh, can uh, debilitate you all through your life forever and so that was my condition and I lost my memory altogether but let me tell you my dear brothers and sisters my parents prayed the servants of God prayed and you know I was in a vegetative state I had no control of my over my body over my mind I was not knowing where I was although I was at home but you know my my blood was so poisoned with the with the drugs that a mosquito would bite and die instantly and uh, you know at that time i would take pleasure in mosquito dying on my blood and i said there is power in my blood at least a mosquito can die <laughs> drinking my blood you see that was getting that was the only moment i would take pleasure and smile because i was in a highly depressed state and at one time i wanted to take my life and uh, kill it and and you know and that night i had an encounter with god with the lord jesus christ and hope came in life came in light came in and uh, my healing started to uh, be quickened and then ultimately i was set free my dear brothers and sisters let me tell you if jesus christ can heal me of my dead memory and my brain cells resurrect them back to life that today i recognize and i know my church members names uh, their husband wife children even the grandchildren whatever i know the names the first names it is only by god's grace and it is only by God's healing that had flowed into my mind uh, and he restored my memory back. I went back to the college. I studied. I did graduation, post-graduation. I've done three post-graduations and a doctorate degree. You know, it, all those things happen. And I'm still an avid student uh, of the word of God and an avid student and a reader, uh, an avid reader of books. I love books. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord has transformed me, healed my memory, healed my brain 
brain cell healed my blood that gives life that was actually killing uh, mosquitoes but now I can give you my blood it is a positive if you would ever need I will come and give it to you free of charge and let me tell you my dear brothers and sisters that my blood has now has got the power to give life to human beings uh, when at a point of time at that age uh, mosquitoes would die if a blood that can kill you a blood that can kill a mosquito my dear brothers and sisters that's how the poisonous my system had become but praise be to Jesus it is by the stripes of Jesus by the power of the Lord God Almighty today I stand before you as a testimony to let you know that by the wounds and by the stripes of Jesus I am healed uh, and today I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus letting you know that Jesus' power is available for you to be healed uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So be ready right now wherever in whatever situation you are. Don't worry. Don't be fearful. Remember the greatest enemy of your soul is fear. The greatest enemy of your body is fear. So eject fear out and receive faith of God into your your heart the faith of the word of God and that will quicken the power of the Holy Ghost to work a miracle inside of you right now right here in the name of Jesus you will be healed you will be delivered it doesn't matter what COVID is there 19 is there 20 is there 21 may come 22 may come it doesn't matter viruses had been right from the beginning of the age ever since from the fall of Adam but let me tell you and give you hope right now even if you're watching me live from your sick bed be healed and be resurrected by the power of God's Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus I speak resurrection and life of Jesus Christ to permeate through your dead cells in the name of Jesus in your deadness of your body in your deadness of your mind and of your brain cells I command them to rise up and live in Jesus name hallelujah let's go into the word of God all right, and let's build up our faith to receive uh, the healing virtue of Jesus right now that is present here. And I'm going to teach you very quickly and preach and show you the word of God that what the word of God tells us in the name of the Lord. Let's turn with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 21 to 25. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 21 to 25. For even here unto we were you called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. When you talk about the suffering of Christ there, it does not mean he was suffering with the sickness. Now mind that. He was not saying, the writer, Apostle Peter was not saying that Jesus was suffering because of sickness. Or Jesus was su suffering because of the curse. Or Jesus was suffering because of disease or despair or discouragement or depression. No. Jesus suffered the persecution, the atrocities of man and uh, the condemnation of the human worldly system. Because the human worldly system could not relate themselves to the truth that was sent from God the Father himself. And so Jesus never suffered because he was sick. Jesus did not suffer because he had fever. He did not die on the cross because he had cancer. My dear brothers and sisters, settle that in your mind. He suffered the persecution of the worldly system and the religious system that had crucified him at that point of time. So the Bible says that further down in verse 22, uh, that you should follow his steps. The word of God is saying you should follow his steps in partnering with the persecution that the world will hate you and not like you because you stand for the truth. You speak the truth. You adhere to the truth. And then he says in verse 22, who did no sin? Jesus did no sin. Zero sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Who then, who when he was reviled, uh, reviled not again when he suffered, the Bible says. He threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. A lot of time we Christians take that scripture out of context and we put it to every form of evil that is happening and say we will do whatever we want to do in accordance to the scripture and we will allow God 
to reign supreme upon the land and upon the earth. But let's go further down what it says. It says there in verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins, hallelujah, should live unto righteousness. There is a condition. What God has done, he died for you on the cross. He paid the price of your salvation, of your sin on the cross of Calvary. He paid the penalty of your sin on the cross. And he anticipates and expects. God has an expectation from the church of Jesus Christ. God has an expectation from every son and daughter of his. His expectation is that you will live up to the moral standard and the righteous standard of God and his word. I have got two sons and you know, you've heard them sing and you know, praise God and worship God and glorify God. You know, my as a father, I have expectations from my son. What is my expectation? I love them unconditionally. I love them the way they are, but I have expectations. That when they are growing up, they will live up to the standards that I have set for them. The moral code, the moral values that I have given for them. They will live up to that standard and match to that standard. Rather, cross over and see the glory of God upon their lives. That's my heart's desire as an earthly father. Similarly, our heavenly father desires that once we are born again, once we are saved, once we have been delivered from the power of Pharaoh, once God has brought us to himself, he anticipates transformation. And he expects that we will die to sin, our sin, and live unto righteousness. That is what the word of God says. Hallelujah. So he says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. And then, semicolon, it says there, by whose stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. 2,000 years ago. Healing was completed. Healing was accomplished. Healing was completed by the Lord Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. And then he says, for you were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. I'm speaking to somebody today. And I remind you again, right here, right on earth, you must and you will be disease free. Sickness free. You know why? Because when we choose to mortify our carnality on the cross of Calvary. And we choose to live by the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will remain healthy and strong and robust on this earth. By the grace of Jesus Christ for the glory of his name. Hallelujah. Jesus doesn't take pleasure in seeing his sons and daughters sick. He does not take pleasure in seeing humanity to be sick. Sickness comes because of the fallen world system. Because Adam sinned. Because sin came in and therefore death came in. There was no death programmed by God for Adam in the initial stages when he made Adam. But what he did was he desired that Adam will live in the Garden of Eden and enjoy the blessings of God, the fellowship of God, tend to the garden and multiply the earth. Hallelujah. That's why the first man, Adam, lived for 900 plus years. Right? And so let me tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying, but now you have returned back. You were a sheep that was going astray. We as Christians can go astray to the world system. Go back to Pharaoh. Go back to Egypt for our help. Go back to the medical system. Now I'm not saying anything wrong about the medical system. They are there to help us. They are there to heal us. They are there to prescribe medicine for us. If I'm sick today, I go to the doctor. So I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. And don't seek help of the medical system. No sir. God did not say that. God has created medicine. God has given healing. God has created doctors and nurses so that they will become a blessing to you. When you are in pain and suffering, they will come and comfort you and alleviate that suffering of pain and of disease from your life. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have returned back to the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. And God desires that God will bless us. Now there's a purpose of Jesus. Why did Jesus come to this earth? He came to do God's will. 
My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus did not come to do his will. He came to do the father's will in heaven. Abba father in heaven, he desired to bless you. He wanted to show you the heart of God the Father. He wanted to show you that the Father's heart is a Father of love, a Father of power, Father of provision, Father of protection, Father of healing, Father who will bless you in every aspect of your life. That's why he came. The Bible says the Gospels and the Epistles show us the will and the testament of God. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Then I said behold I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will O God. Jesus did not come to do his will. He came to do the will of God. In John chapter 6 verse 38. These are Jesus' words. For I have come down from heaven. Not to do my will. My own will. But the will of him who sent me. Jesus said, I have not come to do my agenda. I have not come to do my vision. I have not come to do my plan and my purpose. He said, I have been sent by God the Father to not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent him. Hallelujah. Jesus knew for what purpose he was sent to reveal the will of God, to reveal the purpose of God. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is the express image of God the Father. Express image. And if you look into that. When you see Jesus. When you see the teachings of Jesus. He is revealing the heart of God the Father to you. He's revealing the purpose of God the Father to you. And he desires that you and I. Will live by that purpose. And by that code. And by that conduct. By that rule book of God's word. The Holy Bible. And so that we can live an overcoming life. So the Bible says very beautifully in the, in the book of John that I've taken. But it says here in Colossians 1.15. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. In the book of John chapter 14 verses 8 to 11. What a very beautiful discourse of Jesus with his disciple Philip. And he says to him. What does he say? He says Philip said to him. Lord show us the father. And it is sufficient it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? A good question to ask. I've been with you for so long, Philip. Still you have not known that the father is in me. And you have not known my plan and my purpose. You have not known my heart. And so he's asking a very legible and logical question to Philip. And there he says, he who has seen me. Has seen the father. That's what he's saying. So how can you say. Show us the father. Then further down he continues the discourse. And then he says to him. Do you not believe that I am in the father. That's what Jesus is saying. And asking a question. And the father in me. In the gospel of John. Jesus reveals his deity. As the son of God. A lot of people don't believe. And don't want to believe. That Jesus Christ is the son of God. But here he talks about his relationship with father. He says he talks. He calls his, uh, uh, his God Abba father. And he says that father is in me. The words that I speak to you. I do not speak on my own authority. But the father who dwells in me does the works. A very profound statement. Jesus is making and letting the disciples know. That the father is living in me and he does the works. I am not doing the work. But the father's spirit that is living inside of me does the works through me. And what was the works that Jesus was doing? Mighty miracles. Healing the sick. Raising the dead. Feeding the poor. Hallelujah. Believe me that I am in the father. And the father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. You know my dear brothers and sisters for us to believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. We need to have the revelation of God's spirit upon us. The revelation has to come for us to know and to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. But if that revelation does not come. Jesus is talking to his disciple and he's saying believe at least in the works that I show you. Because a man who is not from God 
cannot show you these mighty miracles that I'm showing to you today. These healings that I'm showing to you today. This, this is what Jesus was speaking to Philip, his disciple. Four things that I want to show you today and then pray for the sick. Remember that you will be healed right now because the truth will set you free. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Jesus also said in the book of John chapter 14, 6, you know, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Again, he said the father except through me. You cannot go to the father in heaven except through the son, Jesus Christ. You cannot go in Samuel's name. You cannot go on XYZ's name. You can only go to heaven and go to the father through Jesus' name. So four things I want to, you know, share with you today and that you can take home and be strong. Four important aspects. Everyone should know about healing. Everyone. Number one, it is the will of God to heal you. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it is the will of God to heal me, to heal you. Tell your neighbor, let them know. In the book of Matthew chapter 8 verses 16 and 17, it is the will of God. It is the will of God. Speak it loud wherever you are. It is the will of God to heal me. And whilst you are saying that, receive your healing because your father in heaven desires and wants and purposes that you will be healed. Now see this is an instance of Matthew chapter 8, 16 to 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, with demon spirits. And he cast out the evil spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. How did Jesus cast out? With his word and healed, underline that scripture, all that were sick. All, all, 100%. 100%. All that were sick. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sickness. Let's go to the next scripture. Matthew chapter 12 verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from the ends and great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. Again, he healed them all. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are hearing this voice wherever you are, Jesus' will is to heal you all. All of you will be healed. All of you will be healed. Even right now, you will be healed and you are getting healed in the name of Jesus. Check your temperature. It's running away. Check your virus is fleeing. Every bacteria is dying in the name of Jesus because it is the will of the Father that you will be healed. Hallelujah. Now, whenever you are sick, don't blame God. Whenever you are sick, don't blame Jesus. Whenever you are sick, don't blame him anything else. Always remember the sickness and disease comes from the pit of hell. It does not come from God. It does not come from God. It comes from the pit of hell. And you and I must exercise the authority that God has given. I'm, come, I'm going to come up, uh, around there uh, a little while. But stay with me for a while on the will of God. It is the will of God that you will be healed. In Amazing Grace Church, we have seen mighty miracles. And we continue to see them every day. You know why? Because as a church, corporately, we believe that Jesus heals us all. Hallelujah. If Jesus has healed me, he will heal you. Amen. In this church, two dead people were raised up because we believe that Jesus' resurrection power is still available to raise up the dead men and women. In the name of Jesus, we have seen that happen. And so we rejoice and we testify and we Declare it from open forums. You know why? Because we believe it is the will of God the Father and His Son Jesus to heal you and to heal me. Alright? Settle that in your mind. In Matthew chapter 14 verse 36. And besought Him that they might only touch the hem of His garment. And as many as were touched were made perfectly whole. Now imagine... Jesus did not have time to pray for all. Jesus did not have time to lay hands on the sick. But now people were believing. And because of their faith arising. They said if peradventure we can touch the garment of Jesus. We will be healed. This was the thought process of the congregation. Or of the people who were following Jesus. That was the power of God. He was revealing the will of God the Father in heaven on earth. That it is the will of the Father for his children to be healed and to be made whole. 
Amen. So as many as touched were perfectly whole. It did not say healed. Mind you. It did not say healed. Healed means stopping of the sickness. But wholeness means that everything that the demon of sickness has destroyed from your life. For example, your lungs have been eaten up. Your organs have been deteriorating. It will not only heal it, but he will make it completely whole. That means every organ that has been malfunctioned in the past will now function normally in the name of Jesus and accurately the way it has been created by the creator. That is what it means. They were perfectly made whole. Hallelujah. So I'm not only talking healing here, but I'm talking wholeness. As I talk to you about my testimony, that my brain cells were dead. If I am living here from that age of 18 to the, till this time, it is by the power of the resurrection of Jesus who has restored back, not only healed my mind, but he has also made it whole in the name of Jesus. There is no more depression any longer. There is no more disillusionment any longer. My blood is healed. Just the other time, a couple of, last year I donated my blood. You know, so what I'm trying to tell you is, the Lord has healed me. If the Lord has healed me, he does not only heal you, but he makes you completely whole. And so remember that, focus that, settle that in your mind right now, right here in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Luke chapter 6 verse 19. And then we'll progress further. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for they went virtue out of him and healed them all. What was happening? The entire crowd, big crowd, because Jesus was doing mighty miracles, feeding the thousands, dead were being raised. So what was happening is huge number of people were following Jesus and the people were following on him. They all wanted to just touch the hem of his garment. Why? Because the power of God, the healing virtue of God, the miracle working power of God was flowing from Jesus. And that's why people wanted to touch him. My dear brothers and sisters, the same power will come upon you and touch you right now by faith when you touch the very throne room of Jesus Christ. Uh, his power will flow to you and flowing through you right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive your healing. It is the will of the father. As I am an earthly father and it is my will that my sons will be healthy and strong. No father wants an anticipated sickness for his children. Hallelujah. It is not in my greatest desire or even in my wildest thought or in my most evil thoughts. I have never thought evil about my sons. Are you with me? Similarly, your father in heaven, if I can be earthly and not think evil about my children, don't you think that your Abba father thinks good about you? Thinks that he will be healed and saved and delivered and set free by the power of the Holy Ghost? That's what he desires. So receive your healing in the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two point. Let's go to the number two point. Number one point, it is his will to heal you. Number two, healing is no different than salvation. God wants to save you. Hallelujah. And in the package of salvation, healing is the bread of the believers. Healing becomes yours. If you look into the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. I like that scripture very beautifully. The Lord is not, is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us. He's patient towards us, not willing that any man or any woman should perish, not willing that any youth or any child should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's what is the heart of God. He desires that humanity that has fallen in sin through repentance, they can come back to the Calvary. They can come to Jesus and get their sins forgiven and obtain the gift of salvation and get their names written in the book of life, in the book that is written by God himself. When God writes your name in the book of life, no demon of hell and no power of man can ever erase your name from the book of life. Only God has that power. Nobody else. 
So never fear. Never fear rejection. Never fear humiliation from man and from the human system. My dear brothers and sisters, but let me tell you, get your names written in the book of life. Today is the day of your salvation. God is anticipating that everyone who's hearing this voice, this is the voice of the Holy Ghost and he's calling you, come to me. All of you, those who are heavy laden and burdened and I will give you rest. Learn from me and take my yoke upon you for I am meek and I am gentle. That's what Jesus is saying to you. Even today. When you're burdened, when you are, uh, you know, downtrodden and, and hard pressed with those things that are flooding your minds of negativity and of death and of despair and of uncertainty. The Lord is saying, come to me and I will give you rest. So it is the heart of God and a mind of God, not only to heal you, but also to save you. That is why if you see the crucifixion of Jesus, what was happening? Even before he died for you on the cross of Calvary, he was beaten 39 times on his back. Even before he died, even before he shed every drop of his blood on the cross of Calvary, he was beaten 39 times. So, God desires not only to you, for you to be healed, but he also desires you to get saved and accept Jesus in your heart. Prophet Isaiah very beautifully describes about the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 and 5. He says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. That's what he says. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Wow. Wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his tribes Ye, we are healed. I like that scripture. And I've highlighted it for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. What he says, and with his stripes, we are healed. 2000 years ago, healing was accomplished by Jesus for you and for me. Even now that healing is available for you and for me. Salvation is available for you and for me. Today is the day of your salvation. If you are hearing this voice, repent from your sin. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Ask God to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and he will bless you. Today is the day of your salvation. Today, the Lord loves you dearly. And he anticipates that today, if you hear the voice of Jesus, you will not harden your hearts, but you will surrender your will and your heart and say, Lord, I need you in this time of pandemic. I need you in this time of despair. I need you in this time of economic turmoil. I I need you Jesus hallelujah and I promise you he will never reject you never despise you never ever he will never despise a broken heart and a contrite spirit my dear brothers and sisters today is the day of your salvation receive him if you receive him write to us let us know we will help you further how to walk in the newness of life and in the gift of your salvation we will show you you're welcome to write to us Amen? Connect with us. Thirdly, let's go into the third point very quickly. You are anointed to destroy the yoke. I like that. You are anointed. Number one, we, we understood it is the will of God to heal you. Number two, it is also the will of God to save you from your sin. Save you from hell. Save you from the power of Satan. It is the will of God, right? Thirdly, once you accept Jesus as a personal savior, he anoints you with the Holy Ghost. What, the, what happens? The spirit of God comes inside of you, enthrones your heart and takes over your mind and then expels every demon from your life. The Holy Ghost, now the power of God that comes inside of you, he expels and pushes out everything that is carnal, everything that is demonic, Everything that is of the curse and everything of the Pharaoh, he pushes it out 
and he liberates you. He anoints you to set you free. And not only to set you free, but you will become a vessel of freedom for other others. Hallelujah. I like that. Praise the Lord. It's not only that I have been delivered. It's not only that I am healed and made whole. But now the anointing of God has come upon me. That it breaks any and every yoke from my life first. And then it has the power to break any and every yoke from other people's lives too. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's look into this. Scripture of Acts 10 38. What did Jesus. What happened with Jesus. How God anointed. Even Jesus Christ the son of God. Was anointed by God himself. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost. And with power. I like that. He did not only anoint him with the Holy Ghost and left him. No, along with the Holy Ghost came the power of God. The same power that parted the Red Sea when Moses stretched forth his hand. The same power that destroyed the enemies of Israel in the name of Jesus. The same power Jesus was also anointed with. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Hallelujah. Who was with him? God was with him. When the Holy Ghost comes inside of you. When God deposits his power inside of you. Because God is with you and in you. The power of God flows through you. And you become a deliverer on this earth. Representing Jesus on this earth in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You become ambassadors of Christ. What does the ambassador do? Ambassador represents the kingdom from where he has come. His nation, his country. You and I have become the kingdom men and women of God. We represent the kingdom of Christ here on earth in Jesus name. Hallelujah. We are, our names are written in the book of life. We belong to the kingdom of God. We belong to heaven. We belong to a different supernatural realm of the Holy Ghost. We are here on earth as ambassadors of Christ. Implementing, establishing, declaring and decreeing the principles and the powers and the statutes of God and the kingdom of God here on earth. In the name of Jesus. That's what we are doing. Same power God has given to you. If you look into Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. What are you going to receive in the Holy Ghost come? Power. Same word that I read about Jesus. He was anointed with Holy Ghost and with power. You and I. Once we receive Jesus Christ, after which we get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit brings in the power of God with us. What happens? In Mark chapter 16, 15 to 18. And he said unto them, go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hallelujah, every creature, every living being preach. He that believeth. It's a present continuous tense. You believed yesterday. You are believing right now. You will continue to believe tomorrow. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Then further down Jesus says the same thing. And he says to the, to, uh, to the next scripture further. And these signs shall follow them. Those who believe. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils. Wow. Whose name? Samuel's name? No, in Jesus' name, you get the authority to cast out demons. That means every believer, that means every member of the church, everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ has got now the power and the authority that in my name you will cast out devils. Hallelujah. So don't run after one prophet, one healer, one mission, this, that. No, 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 no. The anointing and the authority and the power is inside of you. Take authority and cast the demon of the infirmity out in Jesus name. Then they say they shall speak with tongues. In new tongue they shall take up serpents and they will drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Wow. 
they shall lay hands. You heard the story of the lady. She said, you know, I believed in the word of God. Faith came into my hand and I laid my hands on my shoulder and I was healed. Yes, sir. That's what God does. One day I was having a severe pain in my, in my lower abdomen. Very severe pain. I was writhing and turning and tossing on my bed. And I said, God, what's happening? So please help me. He said, you know how to help yourself. God spoke to me. He, you know how to help yourself. So I got off my bed, got down to the living room and I took authority and I laid my hands and I said, I rebuke you pain, you demon of pain, you infirmity. Get out in Jesus name. Five minutes later, I went to the washroom to pass water. And when I was passing water, talk sound came on the pot. And that sound was a stone that came out from my, uh, from my urethra. My dear brothers and sisters, God did that surgery. I had the authority. I exercised that authority. Laid hands on my, on my abdomen. Spoke that pain. Get out. I did not know that I had a stone in my kidney. Or in my, in my uh, urethra. I did not know that. God knew that. I just exercised that authority. Rebuked it. And it fell off. Naturally. My dear brothers and sisters. I have seen mighty many miracles like that. With me. Myself. On and off. On and off. I keep experiencing such miracles. Why? Because God has anointed you. You will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. If somebody is sick in your house, lay your hands right now. In your family, your children, your wife or whoever around you, lay your hands, command the bodies to be healed right now, they'll be healed. In the name of Jesus. Because the word of God says so. Fourth and the last point and then we'll pray. Very quickly. You have authority over all the power of Satan. You have authority over all the power of Satan. As a believer, you and I have authority. In the book of Luke chapter 9 verses 1 and 2, very quickly. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. What he gave them? Power, dunamis, dynamite power he gave them. Explosive power and authority. Both the words I used there. He gave them dunamis power, the dynamite power, explosive power. And he gave them the exousia power, the authority. Like a policeman has an authority from the government. When he says stop, you stop. Likewise, you have that exousia power from God the Father, from the kingdom of heaven. And he says, Samuel, I've given you authority. He's telling you, church, you've got the authority. And you have got the authority to bind and to destroy. That's the authority Jesus has given to you and to me. And also the explosive power to destroy the strongholds of Satan. And he says, over all devils and to cure diseases. Who's got the power? The medical system. Sir, they are there to help you. But they cannot heal you. Healing only comes forth from God. Healing only comes forth from Jesus. Healing only comes forth from the Holy Spirit. Healing only comes forth through the anointed men and women of God who are walking in uprightness and in righteousness. My dear brothers and sisters, that's what the Bible is saying. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Not only to preach, but to heal. Let's go to the another scripture in 1019 of Luke 1019. Behold, I give unto you power, authority to tread on serpents. That's the exousia that he's talking about, authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All means 100%. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. No evil can come near you and no evil can harm you and can ever come near you. You must believe on this word and the promise of God. You have the authority and believe that no evil will befall you and God will bless you. And the last scripture for today, Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven hallelujah praise the lord so take home four things very very importantly my dear brothers and sisters you've got the authority to bind the demonic powers of satan in the name of jesus to tear down every stronghold of the devil in the name of jesus christ of nazareth you will see the glory of the living god if all through this sermon if you could take three th four things Take this. Number one, it is the will of God to heal you. Number two, healing is no different than salvation. God wants to save you. That's his heart. 
Three, you are anointed to destroy the yoke. And fourth, you have authority over all the power of Satan. So go and live like a victor, like a champion of Christ, like a man and a woman of God and receive your healing in Jesus' name right now, right here in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's God be named, be glorified and be praised and be magnified. I've got many testimonies to share with you. But let me pray with you right now so that you will be healed in the name of Jesus. There is no COVID that can kill you. There is no power of Satan that can destroy you. If you believe in the word of God. Yes, the fact is there that many people are dying. The fact is there that the COVID-19 is killing people. The fact is there that many people are dying of cancer. And they're dying of HIV. And they're dying of suicide. Those facts are facts, but the truth is beyond the fact. The truth is that God wants to heal you and desires to heal you right now, right here, not tomorrow. And not only to heal you, but also to make you whole. If you believe that, hallelujah, lift up your hands and start praying. Eyes closed. I'm going to release God's anointing upon you right now, right here. And the power of God will touch you wherever you are. You will be healed if you're on a wheelchair. You will rise up if you're on a deathbed. You will experience the resurrection power of God. If cancer is trying to kill you, that cancer cell is dying in your body right now and life giving cells is coming upon you right now right here in the name of Jesus come on receive it receive it right now the tumor is melting in your brain the tumor in your body is melting those uh, uh, breast cancer is being destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus the kidney problems uh, are being restored in the mighty name of Jesus uh, every spinal cord issue that you are facing right now is being healed in Jesus name uh, every problem with your nerves the Lord is healing you right now. Come on. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your healing right now. I can see people getting healed right now. In my spirit realm, I can see the power of God is touching you right now, right here in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. God can heal me. God can heal you. My dear brothers and sisters, he's not a partial God. He's a God who loves you. And he's a God who cares about you. He's a God who desires that you will be blessed beyond measure. Blessed beyond measure. He's a God. He's not only interested to heal you. But to make you whole. Make you whole. And that you will live long on this earth. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Father in the name of Jesus. I release your anointing. I release your Holy Spirit. I release your power. I release your Holy Spirit of God. Come and brood upon your people. Right now. Right here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I take up the blood of Jesus. And I sprinkle the blood of Yeshua. Upon every brother and sister. Upon every single brother and single sister. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release God's Holy Ghost. I release God's virtue. I release God's power. Come upon them right now. And command their bodies to be healed. Right now. Right here. In Jesus name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty. I send forth your word of healing. I send forth your prophecy of healing. I send forth your declaration of healing. I send forth a decree of healing. To prevail upon your people right now, right here. Every COVID-19 that is grappling India. That is grappling the nations of the world globally. I command that COVID-19 stop in its track. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke you and we push you back. We bind you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody who is grappling with COVID-19. I speak healing into their bodies right now. In the name of Jesus. From the crown of their head to the soul of the feet the bodies will be healed and made whole in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth everyone who's struggling with blood infirmities with with uh, blood chemistry issues uh, I ask of you their blood will be healed oh God every poison from their blood will be removed uh, their bodies will be healed uh, their skin will be healed I can see the Lord is healing psoriasis and, and the Lord is healing some kind of an eczema from your body a skin condition the Lord is healing your skin condition right now receive it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the Lord is delivering you eyesight problem the Lord is releasing a healing blood 
blindness is being taken away macular degeneration the lord is showing me a hole in your in your retina the lord is repairing it and healing it and making it whole you'll be able to see clearly right now every demon of blindness i rebuke you and i command you come out in jesus name and i command life of god healing of god wholeness of god and receive your eyesight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every suicidal spirit, people who are depressed and disillusioned and are, have thought about taking their life. The Lord is saying, have hope in me, my son. Have hope in me, my daughter. I will give you life. I will give you rest. I will comfort you. I will bless you because I am your God. Lord God Almighty, I release your healing to flow upon those people right now. Those who have thought to take their lives in the name of Jesus. I take authority over that demon of depression, over that demon of death and Hades, over that demon of suicide. I cast you out in Jesus name and I release the life giving flow of Yeshua the Messiah. Flow into those minds, flow into those hearts and I set those captives free in Jesus name Lord God Almighty you are an awesome God good God great God mighty God a God who never fails never changes and Lord you are the same yesterday today and forever your word says heaven and earth will pass away but your word will never pass away we have dwelt on your word and on the promises of your word and in accordance to your word you will heal everybody that heareth this sermon in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We praise you. And we give you all glory. Honor. Dominion. Power. Authority. Because all glory belongs to you. And to you alone. In Jesus' most holy. Mighty. And matchless name. We pray. And all of us said. Amen. 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 Before I give the benediction. My dear brothers and sisters. God will bless you. Healing has come upon you. If you've got a testimony. And if you see a testimony arising in a day or two. Write to us, let us know. And on the chat box, there is a form given for you. If you're new to us and new with us, write your names, let us know. Write your prayer request. We will help you and God will bless you and reach out to you and connect with you. God bless you. Thank you. Let's say a word of benediction. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father and the fellowship of his sweet Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And all the saints of God said, Amen.